hello, and welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Yule Bravs. I'm Ronnie. I'm with Ben. Hi, Ben, you sweet Hi. little guy. How's it going, going on today? Are you know, just excited to do some Orange County, one of my favorites. Orange County. How about you? What's going on with you? Uh, um, Same. Just excited for a little Orange County action. Looks like we're about to get a storm here in Tejas. Fun. So that's super fun. Um, really nothing that thrilling, except that this is our final recap of the week, except for the bonus. So I'm super excited for that. It's been a crazy week over here, you guys. One of our craziest, actually. Yeah. Atlanta. Real Housewives of Atlanta. Two episodes of Below Deck Down Under. Episode of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Episode of Real Housewives of Orange County. Bonus episode, Dwell Hello. And what was the other thing? There's one more. Southern Charm. Charm, Which is coming out tomorrow. We were lucky enough to get to see it early, and that shit is good. It's good. So come back for that recap. So this is our last day, but not our last day posting. We will be posting full-time, all the time, as usual. If you want all these episodes on video, super fun to watch them, aren't they? (laughs) Get a boner. Come join our Patreon, patreon.com slash watch what crap ends. And that's also where you'll find our bonus episodes. If you want to watch videos, don't want to pay, you can do that. Just go to YouTube. You'll get the videos a week later. And um, every Monday night, every other Monday night, we are doing Instagram Lives, our new show called Crappy Hour. We will be doing it this Monday, September 20th, 5.30 p.m. Pacific and 8.30 p.m. Eastern. It's like a little talk show. We talk about Bravo Goss with you guys. Um, We're going to take questions from you guys using the question function this week. And then the last 15 minutes, we are going to just do a speed round of taking calls from you guys. And it's going to be madness. It's going to be us. Today, Real Housewives of Orange County, Viva Las Tres Amigas, Season 17, Episode 14, Vicky's back. So let's see what Vicky. kind of bullshit Vicky's going to bring with her. Vicky's back, although she's been back a few times this season, but she's back. She's back. Tracy um, Vegas! Yeah, got a hilarious episode. I feel like Salt Lake City, this episode, just Southern Charm, but especially this in Salt Lake City, really just filling my heart with joy. So um, uh, it starts off, oh, yeah, they're in the middle of a fight. They're in the middle of being mad at Heather Dubrow because Heather did not share with her to share with them that she sold her house. This is a, I get another, it's another version of the Roni fight, which is like, you don't share. So, um, so Tamara, there are actually a lot of parallels this week um, that we will get to as we go. A lot of parallels with New York's fighting and really every housewives. And that's kind of the problem with putting every housewives on the air on at one time. Like, why would you put four on at one time? Like, we're seeing your formula. I remember one yeah. time when I used to recap Bachelor, they did, during COVID, they were like, we're going to show every season of The Bachelor, but a shortened version, like a three hour version every week. It was like 10, it was not every season, but it was like 10 of their best seasons. And I couldn't even recap after that because I was like, oh my God, I'm seeing how exactly the same every episode is. I'm so manipulated. And I'm starting to see a little bit of that with, not that we don't see it anyway, but you guys have to spread it out. You can't have the same fights on every show. But also, I mean, thought. doesn't that speak to human nature that people just have these fights over and over again? Because no. like, is it formula on Bravo or is it also yes. just like people... Had, like certain things are universal, like the fact that people can be harpies, you know. And so, uh, basically, they're all mad at Heather that she didn't share that she was going to put the that her house was on sale because, like, why would she? Why would she with this gossipy group of people who have um, totally, you know, put her through the ringer over probably some casual gossip where she was like, "Oh my God, things with Shannon are not great." And then they turn that into a whole thing. So of course she's going to keep it to herself. So they they go at it. They make it like they make themselves the victims here, which is hilarious. By the way, all hilarious. Very entertaining to watch. And now um, they are yeah, at like this a is pause. Orange County. I mean, they wouldn't only tell people that that house was for sale. They would try to ruin it. They would ruin that's it. That's just how they are. Tamara would be like, "Hi, pay six. Heather Dubrow has murdered twinks in her basement of a house. Let two hundred two Heather Dubrow Lane. Okay, I just <laughs> have to be would- honest." <laughs> Don't get mad at me because I'm on it. 
<laughs> um, yeah, she would try to like ruin the sale. Yeah. You know? So Heather is like pissed. She's really, really pissed. And um, Taylor's like, so uh, she's like, so do you want to move to LA full time? And Heather's like, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know. We are excited. We are figuring it out. Like, okay, all right, all right. She's like, the sale of the house is huge. Why did I even think that by sharing good news, good non-acting news for once, it would be met with anything other than this bullshit? We're just going to have to go around the table. You're just going to go around and say why you're mad at me? Is that what you're going to do to television's Heather Dubro? <laughs> and Shannon sees boxes back on the bar behind them. And she's like, oh, well, I see boxes. So there's, we're getting pizza. But they've finally done it to us. This is now turned into a pizza party. Thanks a lot, Bravo. <laughs> I will not. I'm out. I am out. I am leaving. I am leaving. Although I am just, I just want to see what these pizza. Oh, what are the toppings? Okay. Pepperoni. I don't eat pepperoni. I, I, I'll have a slice though. Yeah, I can do that. Is this glutinous? Okay, I do not want gluten. Could you bring me some bread? I will have bread with this pizza. <laughs> Only bread. <laughs> I want bread as a topping on pizza um, without gluten. But the, the bread is fine. You can keep the gluten in the bread. Just take it out of the cheese. <laughs> so Shannon's like, I see boxes, but I don't, that, that, I don't think that's pizza. Uh, it doesn't look like it. And uh, Gina's like, yeah, I doubt that's pizza. I could be wrong. And Shannon's like, that's gifts. It's gifts. And Heather's like, oh, fine, I'll get the gifts. <laughs> yeah, because Heather, of course, got like gifts and pizza ba- pizza boxes. So uh, Heather goes up to get those, and Gina turns to Emily and goes, I don't feel like that went that great. I'm like, oh, really, Gina? This is classic Gina. I feel bad after she like makes Heather feel shitty about an exciting thing in her life. And she's like, but I'm like your friend. So Emily's like, well, I don't, I'm pissed. Don't call me a liar. I don't lie. So, okay. Well, you get information wrong when you're wasted, apparently. So you can yes. call it whatever you want, but this is all your fault. And Heather's like, I mean, I don't know. Should I just have the waiter come over so I can apologize to him as well? I mean, bring me an Alfredo. Bring me an Alfredo. I'll do it. <laughs> so uh, Jen's like, Yeah, you know what? I'm not. I'm not a liar either, Emily. And I just want to say thank you for being so real about not being a liar. That really. That's really changing things. And Shannon's like, Emily, I did not say anything about you. We just laughed at BravoCon. That's all. <laughs> and Emily's like, yeah, you know, Shannon and I are in a good place. And, like, we worked through our issues. Like, why would we, like, get to the point where we would talk, like, where she would talk badly about me and then lie about it? Like, it just doesn't resonate or make sense to me. I'm like, well... Your friendship with Gina doesn't really make sense to me, but things just happen in nature, you know? And Emily's so funny this season, but she's also still such a hypocrite. Like, nothing has really changed, because you just had a conversation with Heather that was like, I really like you, and your friendship means a lot to me, and whenever we have a problem with each other, we should come to each other to talk about it. And what does she do the second she gets a problem with her? She starts freaking out at an HD party. Yeah. <laughs> and eating her cucumber salad incorrectly, okay? Yeah. Shannon's like, oh, and by the way, I didn't really see Heather at BravoCon, and I'm starting to think that one of Heather's goals is to meddle with my relationships. Ha! So now Heather is in the bathroom sobbing. They're so mean. And <laughs> little buttons are flying out of her eyes. I have no proof that she was crying. I've never seen it. I don't think I ever will see it. She's like a lady from Westworld. Okay. I don't <laughs> believe it. So, um, especially in that cowboy hat that they keep cutting back to her groundbreaking, the cowboy pokey ranch, whatever she was doing. So Heather's like, they're so mean to me. And um, Tamara's like, hey, wait a did you see that girl? Did you see a girl with button eyes run by? Hey, do you see a little girl named Coraline being chased by a big shadow puppet? Where'd she go? He's like, the bathroom. <laughs> so, so, Heather, so Heather comes out, like, all composed again. Actually, he didn't say that. He said, maybe the kitchen, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> if you ever imply that I am waitstaff ever again, this will cost you a lot, Alfredo. So Tamara is like, hey, are you okay, batch? And Heather's like, yeah. Are you sure? No. And Tamara's like, but you can come stay with our room. You can stay with the, the, the Dos Amigas for a second. Because, like, we'd really like to have an opportunity to make you feel bad. Because it's not fun that Gina and Emily get to have all the fun. Batch. And Heather's like, mm. why? Shannon doesn't like me either. I've said it a thousand times. I'm tired of people lying about me. I'm tired of people saying I'm saying things when I am not. I find it very interesting. You know, I think it's very interesting that Emily has a crackerjack theory when it comes to everything that I have said. She's like doing her Heather acting hands. She's like, today, 
it is a stage actress. I shall work with my hands and project to the ceiling. So Emily, back to Emily, she's like, I mean, I even said, what did she tell you? And she said, well, I can't tell you because Shannon said that that's in the vault. And Shannon's like, oh, but she can tell you all those horrible things about my relationship. And Jen's like, oh, do, do we finally get to hear what's in the vault? I would be so grateful for that. Oh, my God. That's one of my four so secrets. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you so much. She was like, what? It's just, it's normal relationship stuff that can just paralyze you. You know, I'll be honest with you guys. The biggest thing for me is that when we first met, we spent every day together. We spent all this time. We laughed. We talked. We had so much love and passion. But now there's always an excuse. It's always like, oh, I have to go home. Oh, it's 1 p.m. I've been here five minutes. I can't look at your face anymore. I've got to go. Oh, I think I want to break up with you. What, what part about me saying this is over does not make sense to you? You know, just like normal relationship stuff. <sighs> Yeah, you know, he said, I just don't like waking up with tarp over my face. And I said, that was a dry cleaning pack. And I did it so you wouldn't get germs up your nose. <laughs> you know, just normal relationship stuff. Like me saying, wow, you're going a little too fast in this water. And him saying, we're in a car, honey. And I say, no, I'm pretty sure we're on a boat. And he says, no, we're actually in a car and we're in Arizona. I say, no, we're in Newport Beach. Are you trying to gaslight me? And he oh, says, no, dear. So upset that I... Put a little hand sanitizer in a shot glass for him. I just wasn't trying to kill him. I just wanted to make sure that he was safe in his lungs. There's still COVID. <laughs> I Fucking you know, neurotic just normal relationship things like when you say, "Oh, I'm so, I love being a USC graduate," and he says, "USC more like SUC, as in suck. You can suck it." <laughs> just normal, normal relationship stuff. You know, he just can't stay. And Taylor's like, "Cause you feel abandoned. I'm not scary." And she's like, "Yeah, you know, I have those issues from my childhood. I remember I was riding a horse, and my the horse ran away." At one point, it was very upsetting to me. And that's the worst thing. It's like, you're walking out on me. We just had an argument. So what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, that's the hardest thing? <laughs> and then she tells us, she's like, these women all think that there are greater things going on in my relationship. Nope. I've been thinking about it. And obviously, it's making me have more than my average of 40 to 50 negative thoughts a day. So I'm going to talk about it. And if John is home, that's not fun. But in the scheme of life, it's not that big of a deal. And John has allowed me to say all of this. So, <laughs> print. Take I that. I am John Jansen. Put that in your pipe and message. smoke it, editors. <laughs> Well, John doesn't want you to talk about your relationship, and I told you, women need an outlet. We need to be able to talk. And that's why I told John, take this fork and stick it in an outlet, because you need an outlet. <laughs> he goes, well, you know that we don't talk about relationships. And I said, well, that's your rule, not mine. I said that to him. And then I said, do not take the keys from the valet, or I'm going to strangle Archie. And then I said, do not get into that car, or you will never hear from me again. <laughs> and then I said, come back. I've been banned by Uber. You can't do this to me. And then I said, oh, uno mas tequila, por favor. And then I said, stop asking about my relationship, Miss Harrow. And then I fell on the floor and rolled down the hillside because I was paralyzed. So <laughs> Emily is like, I really like that Shannon's opening up, but I feel like it's just the tip of the iceberg. Literally because she said all this stuff while holding a head of iceberg lettuce. Well, you know what? He's an avoider, and I'm a communicator. He's a runner. I'm a, please stay with me, please, please. He's a, uh, claims it's a truck, but I say, no, I'm pretty sure this is a boat that we're on. You know, one of those relationships. He's a blow-up toy. I'm a suck toy. You know what? That came out wrong. I didn't really mean it like that. I'm really not a suck toy. Do they have suck toys? I don't know. I don't like thinking. John would like me talking about this. So then we cut back to Heather going off. And she's like, they just don't like me. And that's okay. Because there are plenty of other people that I paid to say they do like me. Now, I'm just getting to the point where I'm telling you, Tamara. Mm -mm, I do not care. I do not care. I could tell. I could tell. I could tell. You know what? I am at a tipping point with everyone. As in, I'm starting to realize they're just like a bunch of waiters I have to tip. And I just feel like I am taken to task for everything I do. I am held to a different set of... I am held at a set of standards that is reserved for very wealthy people who have a certain degree of fame on television. And I'm not sure that's fair. Actually, no, so actually, I like that. I, I actually appreciate that. Thank you very much. Would you like an mm -hmm. autograph? 
<laughs> so then we go back to Jen and she's like, um, can I ask a question, Shannon? Um, so like if we're just gonna put stuff on the table, we're we're doing that, right? And Shannon's like, Oh, is this about me saying there's juicy stuff about Ryan? Okay, fine. And we cut to yoga and Jen's saying that Shannon has been nice to her and Gina starting more you know, Tamara gets the award for starting shit on this show, but Gina, Gina really does it. Uh, Gina's Gina's getting a gold as well. Can you get double golds? Because Gina is like, well, sh- sh- uh, Tamara hasn't really been nice to you, though. Uh, Gina gets a mold face, medal. Jen? Okay. A mold G- medal. <laughs> Gina can't afford gold, so she'll settle for a mold. You know, Gina, Gina, who is so concerned about people talking about other people and not having their best interest at hearts, yada, 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 is only so happy to try to turn Jen against Shannon. And Shannon, by the way, who doesn't like people talking about relationships, is only so happy to talk, be like, oh, there's more going on with Jen and Ryan. So Gina tells Jen this, which, will get, which gets Jen agitated at Shannon. Yes. And uh, Gina's always going to be anti-Shannon. It's a mommy issue. I'm surprised that she gets along with her mom so well because she she seems to have a mommy issue. Maybe it's like an auntie issue. Maybe she has an aunt that she just really does not get along well with. And maybe that's her her mother-in-law. Like someone's just really judgy of her, was really judgy of her or something who is like an older woman or something. Because she, Mm -hmm. like you can see it. So Emily is like, uh, well, at the pool party, she was saying, we're going to delve more into your relationship with Ryan because there's some juicy stuff and there's way, way more so we cut back and shannon goes okay i did say that stuff and i'm sorry that i said it but i just couldn't handle you know because i couldn't handle one of those things that's been said about you i mean i would not be able to handle i don't even know how you're still here how are you not still here (laughs) yeah and uh gina's like you know what shannon pretends like she's a good person but here we are with jen and tamra finally getting along and you wanted someone to dig up dirt about their relationship but you're the one who's who's Dude is trying to shatter it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like Jen would have been fine. She would have doodled along, you know? <laughs> you're the one. They're finally getting along, and now you're going to try and ruin it. Okay? It's so funny. So, you're the one who told Jen that Shannon knew stuff, and you started all this to make Shannon look bad, you dummy. Like, they just showed the clip, Gina. Like, you're so bad at this. So, Shannon's like, well, I just heard that there's a lot of stuff that hasn't come out. You know, a lot of stuff. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what this stuff is. No one told me what this stuff is. But did I hear it? You? Yep. Yep. <laughs> did I did I enjoy it? Yes. Did I did I laugh a little bit? Perhaps. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. And Jen, uh, Jen is like, oh wait, so someone said that Tamara has so much more. Tamara, and she's like, Tamara have a, Tamara and I have a mutual acquaintance at the gym. And a few weeks ago, she reached out and said that Tamara reached out to her and asked her for info about my relationship. I love that Jen is just like openly talking with ryan's mistress like she just has an open line of communicate they're all swingers i'm telling you they're yeah. swingers so tamara's like this is the girl that ryan was cheating with cheating on jen with okay i wasn't digging for info of any kind ryan and the girl got into a fight about after nobu and so she wanted to retaliate so she sent me all the text messages between her and ryan while ryan was in a relationship with jen I'm like and jen's like why, oh, but, no i'm like you know what Tamara, you can use this line only so many times. Like, oh, like the person who called up Tamara to say, let me tell you everything about Gretchen. Why is it that everyone comes to Tamara when they decide they want to air some dirty laundry? Okay. That either speaks to your character or it speaks to your shadiness. But like, I'm just not believing it anymore. I don't know if I even believe it in the first place. Uh, whoever believed it, Tamara's awful. She's satanic. Okay. She is a terrible human being. That's why I'm laughing. Like, I've just gotten to the point I don't even get mad anymore. I just no, it's crack great. Up now. It's hilarious. It's terrible. It's terrible. She's bringing on this woman, okay, who's already fucked up her life. And I know that she, that's very offensive to say that she fucked up her life. You did fuck up your life, okay? Like you did. You did. Sorry. I mean, just looking at this objectively, she fucked up her life. She's trying to piece things back together with this fuck boy, with Mr. Furly Face. And now she's got you trying to ruin that on national TV after you brought her on the show. I mean, you are just such. An asshole. You Tamara literally brought this person on to humiliate her. She probably said to her, okay, and come on, but you know what? You got to dress better. You got to get some like designer labels. So, you know, Jen's like trying to make herself look nice. And then Tamara, of course, makes fun of her for that this episode. Like Tamara is so, she is a evil person. And I'm, she's, she's horrible. So, I'm really glad she's back. So Jen, um, yeah, Jen is basically like, Tamara and I are supposed to move forward. Like, where, where are you going to go with this? Like, what's your plan with this? I'm to destroy you, bitch. Okay? Stupid blonde bitch. 
It's probably and Tamara. By the way, Tamara's probably has. jealous. Probably Tamara has a thing for Ryan. I'm going to put it out there right now. She is probably jealous. Well, suppose yeah, when she's making up that thing of like supposedly Ryan came in and said, "I'm going to fuck her about Tamara." Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sure. I don't I don't believe that. Yeah, I think she's got like a little jelly gel. But I think she's also jealous just because she brought this girl in, but this girl is the ultimate OC. She's gorgeous. She's blonde. She has a fucking insane face that no one can really understand. Like the laws of physics don't understand how that's even been done to one human face. She's younger. She's got all this money from an ex relationship and she's still got a, like a hot as fuck boyfriend and a really good life. I mean, yeah. Tamara, she's got a lot of kids who will speak with her. But no offense. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of a low thing to push, but it's true. So um, she literally there's a lot has to kittens. be jealous of there. She literally has kittens. Yeah, Tamara is fully threatened by this. The woman. kittens talk to her more than Tamara's children will talk to Tamara. Okay, I'm gonna say that. Wait a second. Are you saying that like are you just gonna discount Ryan? I mean, he is just like a real he's a real asset to Tamara's life, okay? It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. Hey listeners, you need to know that Wondery's shocking true crime podcast Over My Dead Body is back for a fourth season, Gone Hunting. This newest season covers the story of Mike Williams. It was Mike's sixth wedding anniversary when he set off on a hunting trip into the gator-infested swamps of North Florida. He figured he'd be back in time to take his wife Denise out to celebrate, but he never came back. Friends and loved ones feared he met his fate through bad luck and a group of hungry alligators, leaving his young family behind. Except that's not what happened at all. And after 17 years, a kidnapping, and the uncovering of a secret love triangle, the truth would finally be revealed. Enjoy Over My Dead Body, Gone Hunting on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Over My Dead Body early and ad-free on Wondery+. Plus. Get started with your free trial at Wondery.com slash plus. I want you to picture Steve Jobs tinkering with a computer in his garage, Walt Disney drawing cartoons for his high school newspaper. Every big moment starts with a big dream, but what happens when that dream turns out to be an even bigger failure? Each week on Wondery's new podcast, The Big Flop, host Misha Brown is joined by different comedians to chronicle some of the biggest failures and blunders in pop culture history. Each episode will have you thinking, why in the world did this get made? From box office flops like Cats the Movie to Action Park, New Jersey's infamous theme park that had countless injuries, many lawsuits, and rides so wild it became known as Class Action Park. Or Quibi, that short-form video platform with an even shorter lifespan. It's a story of a spectacular failure with lots of surprises along the way. Enjoy The Big Flop on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to The Big Flop early and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Get started with your free trial at wondery.com slash plus. So Tamara is like, hey, Heather. Hey, because we're still talking. Heather, let's go celebrate the sale of your house. She's like, well, I don't want to celebrate with them. And by them, I mean both the women and the waiters. And so Heather's like, She's like, but you know what? Uh, fine, I guess I'll give out these gifts. Fine. So she has to go re like reluctantly hand out pizza boxes of gifts, which is hilarious because she hates everyone at the table right now. And uh, Tamara's like, wow, here you go. And fuck you, right, guys? And Shannon's like, where have you guys been? And she goes, with Miss Zubel. She just feels like she can't do anything right. I think she was hoping that everyone was going to want to celebrate with her. And Emily's like, you want me to celebrate your house? You called me a liar and an asshole. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I don't want to compete with um, Heather's news that she sold her house for $55 million. But um, these octopus tacos are here, if anyone is interested. Would anyone like some octopus tacos? <laughs> um so heather like passes out gifts miserably and um <laughs> emily's so like wait good. i even got one i thought i'm an asshole you are an asshole take your fucking gift <laughs> my god so so it's like a bunch of like just things the boxes say fiesta then the siesta get it because fiesta and siesta rhyme with each other so it's like things like tequila and earplugs and fans little hats it's kind of like travel essentials as terrible gifts stupid HG gifts Network. like yes stupid gifts nobody wants these stop trying to out money everybody you know like you know that they're going to be annoyed that you just made 50 million dollars okay in secret and now you're coming to out money them with gifts no one wants your little fucking table your mexican food table runner you know also like, the it's like what are you giving them like little <laughs> mini sombrero like fuck off 
Also, Bryn Whitfield, now you should be a little bit more appreciative of your Jenna Lyons collabs that you're getting in YouTube side because this is what it could be. Okay, you could be exactly. getting, you could be getting weird gifts from the HD network. So appreciate your Jenna Lyons branded collabs. Yeah, those are actually classy things. You know, <laughs> they're not just like Dollar Tree shit thrown into a box with your name on it. <laughs> um, and also, this is another parallel as you just brought brought up to New York is the gift thing. People being like uh, Emily, being like, I don't want the gift. I just want you to be easier to be friends with. Can you wrap that up? I mean, you're the asshole in this situation. You were mean and drunk at the HD event. You misheard mm -hmm. what was being said at BravoCon because you were drunk, and you're tattletaling to Shannon about st uh, stuff that Heather told you in confidence, even though Heather probably only told you that because she knew it would be repeated and she didn't want blood on her hand so Heather well, is kind of an asshole in that way but you're still the asshole and situation. Gina herself said it was actually Tamara who said it not uh Shannon but of course Gina would never you know speak up if because of know, course Gina's just asshole. staying quiet over there she's like trying to stir another pot on the other side you know <laughs> So the producer's like, why do you bring gifts to everyone, Heather? She goes, I mean, a leopard doesn't change its spots, which is why Terry and I always love to go to Africa and kill them. It's so easy to see those spots. Anyway, I am who I am. And when we go on a ton of trips, I like to bring, I like to bring a trip gift. Do I think they deserve them? No, but they're already monogrammed, you know? <laughs> P they all say PP. Poor person. Here, PP. Here, PP. Here, PP. Uh, every By the way, single I have... one of them says their name Alfredo <laughs> I have no evidence that Heather and Terry go and kill leopards in Africa I don't know why I said that I just felt like it was a rich person it does thing seem do. like a like a it's not Jersey Mike so what's the sandwich shop that uh, the guy is a big game hunter what are the big is famous it, sandwich shops there's uh, Subway is it, J, is it um, J, 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 J yes that one what's it called Jim, johnny johnny jim jim oh i know there's one that's it's pe people, people are hitting their it, steering wheels good. jj's j sandwich Djibouti. guy Jib big game hunter let's jj watts jimmy johns jimmy johns yeah and uh usa today in 2020 said fact check jimmy johns founder did hunt big game but is no longer Sandwich Shop's owner. Oh, okay. So we're not supposed to be mad at the new people. <laughs> so who's the new person? Who's the new? Guess what? Hello, I'm Heather Debro, and I now have a new sandwich. <laughs> Welcome to HD John's. <laughs> uh, oh, so um, they go to bed. Because they're done. <laughs> and Gina's like, this is the most uncomfortable gift I've ever received. Really? I would imagine every other gift you've received in your home is comfortable because you can't even fit in there. Like, how do you even open the box? Okay? <laughs> Shut up, Gina. So then it's day The box two. is her new home, by the way. She's like, wow. Is this box an escrow? <laughs> She's like sitting in the box. She's like, this is the most uncomfortable <laughs> gift I've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bed, Gina. It's a box. That, I don't even have room for my diff. bottles of ragu in here. <laughs> so day two, um, everybody's waking up, and uh, Jen's calling Ryan, and he's surprisingly not in the dark this time, which is a good sign for their relationship. And uh, Terry, Heather's bitching up to, to Terry, and she's like, they asked about the sale of the house, and I was so excited to tell them, and then they sat there like this. Hmm. And Terry's like, that's not kind. Just forget yesterday. You're so fucking rich, Heather. Did you realize when you woke up this morning how fucking rich you are? These people are lucky to be around you. We're wealthy. <laughs> they don't even know J.C. Fuentes. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So she's like, you know what? That's right. I am an actress, and therefore, I'm going to have a great attitude, which was a TV show I did audition for, and unfortunately did not land that role. Great attitudes with Heather, Heather Dubrow. But I will tell you this. Every time that we're out together, it always comes down to me, and I'm not tolerating, tolerating it anymore. And if it happens again, I am out. Mm. And then uh, Tamara's at breakfast with Taylor, Shannon, and Jen, and they're asking about Heather. And Tamara's like, I asked her to come to breakfast, but she said that she's already got breakfast up there. So, you know what? I get probably all frustrated with Heather because she's like, eh, eh, la -da -da, la -da -da. But you know what, guys? I think it's just who she is. It's like, really? Because you're the one stirring shit against Heather constantly. Tamara's so heard this entire thing. 
This entire thing with Heather started with Tamara because Tamara heard that Heather had said something and was then went back to Shannon and said, like, Heather's talking shit about you. So Shannon's like, well, I'm sorry, but there have been multiple things that have happened between her and I that have not been happenstance talking to you and Emily and Gina about my relationship when I'm trying to talk about Jen's relationship instead. That's not fair. And that's exactly. not... <laughs> That's not who Heather, that's not just, oh, this is who Heather is, because she's above everything else. That's her just being an asshole. Ha! God. Yeah. Um, Shannon. Wow. So you just admitted you talked about Jen's relationship. You talked about Gina's relationship, how Travis is going to get sick of her complaining. And you brought up on camera Heather's relationship issue rumors. So by the way, I think that's mm. all fair of her to do. You just can't get all crazy when Heather's like, by the way, I think that there's like issues with with John and, and, and Shannon. Yeah. So Heather and Gina are outside having breakfast with Emily outside their room. And Heather's like, you know what? I don't even need a scene bath. All I need is to walk out here. Hold on. Wait for the laughs. All right, Jimmy Burrows, thank you. Cut the laugh track. We'll do it again later. Okay, girls, here I am. Television's Heather Dubrow. Croissant? Love your sandwiches. Um, so, <laughs> Croissant. So I was like, let me just start by saying that for your party, if you felt I was being a jerk, I apologize sincerely. You were being a jerk. And Heather goes, well... <laughs> An apology is really fantastic, but there's a pattern here, and it's pretty tacky. But enough about her clothes. Let's talk about her behavior. And then we see a clip of Emily having to apologize over and over, one outfit worse than the other because they're all costumes. It's like, and then the blonde wig, and then now they're in a different wig. So um, Heather's like, I really do not know what I've done to her. And Emily's like, all I can do is say I'm sorry. And that I will probably do it again. <laughs> well, I just want to restart. And I hope you can see. This is why I was like a spring, you know? Do you know how much I've been dying to tell you guys the story about the house? Dying, dying, dying. Gina, do you want to come out of your pizza box? I've got a story to tell you about my house. Gina, the box just opens up and Gina's head is in there. <laughs> oh, good morning, everyone. Pizza, pizza, am I right? Good morning. <laughs> hey guys, uh, there's a there's a there's a chance of meatballs. Okay, <laughs> it's cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Am I right? Gina, your hair looks great. Oh yeah, I conditioned with the little packet of garlic sauce that was in the box. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt the show to ask you something medical. I know you love medical things. I do. So, I do. Um, I do. I, when I do, whenever I've been doing something really intense with my face, like Emily right now, or laugh too hard or something, my ear like pops in a way. Like it's not pressure. It's like a muscle inside of my mm -hmm. ear that's like, like, like right behind here. Oh. And it really hurts. It's inside my ear. What do you think it is? <sighs> I, I think you may only have about five days left to live. I'm so sorry. Oh, shit. Well, <laughs> Get it all in now. Listen, oh. I got my twitchy eye going on right here, my twitchy eyelid. So I think it's just we're old. We're old, and this is I what happens. Just old? Weird oh. shit happens. Weird I guess. Shit. Someone told me it's, I'm probably chewing gum, and that's going to give me some jaw disease. I forget what it's called. You have locked jaw. Yeah. But is that what TMJ lock does? Does it hurt your ear? TMJ, you'll get like a click like here. Yeah, it can be like it's a muscle not a click. It just hurts. Like It's like the inside of my ear like really hurt. Like if you have an earache, but it's like a sharp pain. Oh, Okay, so any doctors, DM probably, me. It probably is TMJ. Someone DM Ronnie and prescribe him something. I'm doing okay. the Ali Sheedy Coke jaw right now, but it's not Coke jaw, guys. By the way, Ronnie, I just want you to know this has nothing to do with the podcast, and I, but I um, I move my my four o'clock appointment to four thirty, so now I oh my gosh, to get my, you guys don't understand. I'm under so much stress right now because my my second sewing class, so I, I finished sewing class number one where I made pajama bottoms, and then I'm starting sewing class number two tomorrow, and we're going to make a jacket, and I'm supposed to go to the place to get sewing materials for this class and i wasn't able to go all last week because i had covid and now i have like a very small window to get this stuff and it was stressing me out like am i gonna have time to get this stuff before the class begins because otherwise i'm fucked i can't i can't make my jacket and uh that's I think a big thing i mean when it was pajama pants it's like who cares what the fabric is you know it's yeah. pajama pants but a jacket that's a big deal yeah you could so wear that I need to like wear race. that to the crap. Exactly. I need to race to Santa Monica after this to go to the place. And so I'm just like, I'm a ball of stress. So I just was able to open up 30 more minutes for myself. And I'm just letting you know. I love it. I know, you were, I know I talked about this before. And I want you to know that this is 
there's been some time that's opened up. And oh my God, I just spent my new 30 minutes talking about how I have 30 minutes. Damn it. <laughs> You're going to be exactly two and a half minutes late to the store, which is how long that story took. They're going to be like, sorry, shouldn't have talked about your luck. Damn it. Project, <laughs> project, ugh, way. Okay. So um, uh, now, so, so by the way, so now, uh, uh, Gina's saying, like, oh, by the way, I was, like, surprised, because, like, you didn't share about the house with me. And a day earlier, we see Heather going up to Gina saying, by the way, I'm so sorry I didn't call you. I just, I feel, like, constantly put upon by everyone. And Gina goes, yeah, but, like, you know, but then, like, you group me in with, like, everyone else, and that, like, makes me want to pull away from you, and, like, I don't treat you that way. It's like, you do treat her that way, especially, did you notice the way you piled onto her that last night like get over it gina you're you're crazy you're also the one who wouldn't even text her back between seasons when she was trying to have a real friendship with you that was a whole plot of the beginning of this season and now yeah. gina's like oh you're just pushing me away gina's the worst so heather's like uh, and also gina's only on this show to be the producer's narc that's all she is she's there to do whatever the producers say and that's why she's had a job for that everyone's wondering like why is gina still here because she does this the producers are like go make shannon have a nervous breakdown just accuse her of something she's like all right and then she goes and does it uh so heather's like um i'm not saying this to be dismissive or unkind or unkind but poor people i'm done with you okay. are we done for the are we done with this session okay because i think my immunity is about to run out okay. so <laughs> so the girls uh they're all getting in the van the plan today is to ride atvs and then jump into cenotes so that sounds great it sounds like so many different ways to get injured i'm excited for them i mean for anyone who watched um uh last what was it the, what was the capo show that i really loved oh um friends only cabo or something yeah, invite, invite only, only cabo, cabo which yeah. i loved that show with emily Emily and Agu, who then Larry. went on to OnlyFans. God bless. And Larry. Yeah, what a show. What a show. And then there was that one girl who got injured on the ATV. I'm like, guys, don't do the ATVs. What are you doing? <laughs> so so they the get on the bus to go have fun and exciting things day. And uh, Tamara brings her own toilet paper. <laughs> and uh, Gina is very Real Housewives of New York again. You see? So many little parallels today. And so Gina's like, Oh my god, I mean, is it cenotes or centes? What is that? You Where are we literally going? went to one last year, Gina. They literally went to a cenote last season on this show. But Gina's one of those people who thinks like ignorance is hilarious. She's like, is it taco or choco? What is that? <laughs> I don't think I'm seeing <laughs> Ma'am, when you asked that question, could you not just, like, hold the pizza box like it was your mouth? I just love puppetry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gina's, so they get there. They get, like, a little tutorial about how to ride ATVs. And they do the ATV thing. We've seen this on Bravo a million times. I fucking love Mexico, by the way. Because everywhere else is, like, these long... It's like, okay, you're going to have to sit here for an hour and listen to these things. They have to cut it out. In Mexico, they're like, okay, welcome to Sonote. Up is stop. Right is go to the right. Left is go to the left. Enjoy. And they just leave. I was like, yes, welcome to my childhood. This is literally how I learned everything. Raise your hand if you need us to stop. That's it. That's all you get. So they're driving around the ATVs, and Heather's like, I do not like this at all. I have checked the box, and I am never doing this again. I want walls on my cars. And uh, Shannon's being Shannon. Yeah, she's like, whoa, 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 whoa crazy. And uh, Gina's like, when I see Shannon... All I can see is all I can see is Jennifer Coolidge on a Vespa in White Lotus. <laughs> and um He's I gay. hate that she's so correct because <laughs> that is Shanna's storyline this season, just like freaking out, like, oh my god, is he cheating on me? Is he cheating on me? <laughs> <laughs> These gays are trying to they're trying to kill me, I think. I'm not sure. Oh no, they're just they're actually walking by and ignoring me. That also is sort of a, a death in its own way. <laughs> So um, they arrive at the cenote, and it's like there's like they're gonna jump in. So Emily jumps in, and um, they in the preview they make it seem like Emily ju jumps in and like hits her head and dies. But she jumps in, they don't see her for like a second, and then she pops up and she's coughing, and um, but she's fine. <laughs> yeah, she's like oh, I'm okay. Um, but I like that she goes, I'll do it. What's in there? Fish. 
<laughs> yeah. What are these guys? These guys are like, yeah, there's fish and cameras and watches and dead bones, bones of dead people. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Gina's like, you got balls. So then um, Jean, she's got a bloody nose as she comes out. But Heather's like, oh, whoa, hard no, hard no. Wow, uh, there's not enough champagne in the world to make me do that. Have I gotten any champs cuts? Guys, can, <laughs> let's put a super cut together of champs cuts. <laughs> HD champs cuts. I'll do anything once as long as it doesn't involve reconstructive surgery. I mean, I like plastic, elective plastic surgery, just not reconstructive. <laughs> so there's just like more, and there's they're doing the rope swing, and that's fun. And then Gina, she dusts off this old thing. She's like, oh my God, I have always been scared of water. Like to the point where like, I wouldn't even take baths for a while. I'm like, mm, this, is not a, this is not a charming anecdote. It's really not. Especially, it's like, especially the poor person. Like, could you not? Like, so then Heather's like, um, conquer the fear. And um, Gina runs right to the edge, but then stops. And she's like, my life is flashing before me. It's short. And it's really poorly branded. Damn it. It all so fits in a pizza jumped. box. <laughs> like, so she Gina, ends up going from a lower level. Those are not floaties. Level. That's just pizza boxes that you put your arms through. <laughs> she makes a big deal out of it, but she jumps from the lower level and they play hero music. Okay, so now we're back to the hotel places and they're getting ready for tonight. Oh. And Gina's. Um, uh, let's see. She she calls Travis, and Travis is at the food court because it's the only way to make all six kids happy. He's and like, that's just the so difference nice. about. <laughs> He's like, I just I needed to bring the kids someplace where we could all put our hands out to our left and our right and not touch any walls. Just we just needed to be here for a second. <laughs> no kidding. I'm gonna. Can we just start raising our kids outside the Cinnabon because this is a much easier <laughs> life. <laughs> Um, but he says it's the only way to make six kids happy, which is hilarious. And you know that it's like the dad and not the mom. Cause my mom, my dad was like that. He's like, how can I make you happy kids? It's dad night. My mom's like, here, eat it, eat it or leave. You know, <laughs> Gina's like no food court for you kids. Tonight's ragu soup. <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. So Tamara and Shannon um, are talking. Tamara's like, do you like my purse? It's not like Jen's purse today. That fake Chanel. I mean, fake Chanel. Fundy. The Fuji she wears. I'm like, what are you talking about? How dare you? And also, Gina is still here. Can we not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please. Gina is wearing a pizza box as a skirt tonight. Okay. Can we just like... <laughs> Respect. Gina her. comes out in something that says Versace, but it's spelled in like glued on macaroni noodles. Like, come on, let's not be cruel like this. <laughs> it's, <laughs> so, yeah, it's literally, it's literally a child's project. So Tamara's like, Jen was the fake yoga mom, and now all of a sudden she's like dripped in fake designer clothes, and you want people to think you have this kind of money, and I don't buy that. Well, what about you, mall rat? I mean, what are you talking about, Tamara? Tamara from Glendale, who, like, talk about someone who probably worked in Blockbuster Video for 12 years, which is, by the way, fine. But she's acting like she is, like, um, the fifth generation DuPont over here. Like, you also had humble beginnings, Tamara. Tamara is one of the trashiest housewives of all time. And everybody knows it. I mean, they call her Tamrat. They call her Trash rat, <laughs> Tamara has the most unflattering <laughs> nicknames online of any housewife I've ever heard of in my life. Tammy Sue. Yeah, I mean, I mean you. I mean, just, like Tamara, you own a failed gym, and you're, and like at least Jen's is a functioning gym. Like, like, and you're gonna even act, if it's in a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. It's just she has a gym without walls okay but like Tamara's gonna really pull this card. So the producer's like, well, who makes your dress? She goes, oh. It's a Mugler. <laughs> yeah, it's real. It's Mugler. real. It's a real Mugler. The Mugler. I know, but These I don't think he says it right. so though. ugly. Oh, is it? How, do you, how did you well, say I, it? Well, I looked it up. I mean, you're supposed to say it like Mugler, like Thierry Mugler, something like that. Thierry Mugler. Mugler. But she's like, Mugler. Mugler. It's a Mugler. Mugler. I think she said Mugler. Because I was I like, know, oh my God, is it right. related I to Buble? I take it back. I take um, it all back, Tamara. You're right. I don't know. 
I don't really know. I know that she's trash, and I know that I hate these Mugley whatever clothes because everyone's wearing them. This is like the Kim Kardashian bodysuit thing, right? Or the Lisa Rinna, the one that Lisa Rinna knocked off, but is in it? purple when she got caught in her villainy with Erica in front of that air that air conditioning thermostat. <laughs> all I Kyle's know is house. that all I know is that he died recently, and like uh, oh, people love him. Sorry, and, no, no, it's fine. And that when I did research on how to say his name before I shamed Tamra. Which Tamara actually didn't really say it that wrong. But like when I did, I then wound up watching a video of like four fashion academics in Brooklyn having a roundtable discussion about his influence. And it was the funniest thing ever. And it doesn't take away from Terry Mugler. It was just like the, the uh, Mugler. But it was just the, it was just the seriousness of like, can we talk about Terry Mugler? And they're like, yes. <laughs> it was yeah, just very, very, like very, very accurate very fashion. Studying. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but I don't like it because it's all that like skin tight, like ice skating material. It's weird. I'm not into it. So there's he's, a knock at the he's door. He's no Galia Lahav, that's for sure. Yeah. Nor is he a ga- cult Gaia. He's no cult Gaia. That's for damn sure. So cult there's Galia a knock Lahav. at the door, and Shannon gets it, and there's horror music, and Vicky's terrifying face comes into the frame screaming woohoo. And, um,. I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> I was happy. <laughs> Honestly, I was happy. I was, I giggled when Vicky shows up goes, ah! it's just like so terrifying and perfect. <laughs> and um, Tamara tells us that she invited Vicky to Mexico. Um, and Vicky's like, ah, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I had to ask Linda, my office manager. She never lets me go anywhere. <laughs> Truth me, guys. <laughs> oh. Mm, and Tamara's like, oh my god, to have the Trace and Beagles together is everything. And uh, Tamara's like, oh my god, I peed on the floor. And she's like putting her hand up her crotch. She's like, yeah, I peed on the floor, everybody. <laughs> That's me and Clats and Tamara, the real Mugle. <laughs> um, uh, by far, the best memories I have are with Vicky and Tamara. I mean, some may be blurry and some may be them gagging up on me and some may be if one of us always seemed to be breaking a bone. But um, yeah, yeah, great, great memories for us. Um, I mean, there was that time where Tamara ganged up with Heather and tried to get me thrown into a loony bin and get section 12, or whatever you call that, whatever section that is. That was super fun. <laughs> or when um, Vicky uh, brought out uh, spousal abuse against me at a reunion. That was super fun. Oh, God, such great memories. Oh, God, Shannon really has to blank out a lot of memory to be friends with these people. <laughs> she does. God. So they, they do shots. They do the Three Amigos thing. You know, they are having fun. And then um, now everyone's going to gather for dinner. So the other non trace Amigas, um, they gather at this table. And Heather's like, wow, there's a lot of extra chairs, are there not? This is strange. And Emily's like, well, there's just like one extra chair, which is kind of freaking me out. God, why you over-exaggerate everything, Heather? You're such a fucking asshole. This is what you do. You over-exaggerate. You talk about people. <laughs> They've been to this place before, right? Nectar, but with a K. Where have we heard that before? Probably. It's like it's been on one of these shows, I feel like. There's Nectaria. Isn't What's that? that? Um, Dorit's. Isn't that Dorit's? Isn't it Dorit by Nectaria? Remember like. Oh, yes. It's Dorit's it's... wedding dress line. God, yeah. you're good. I don't know. It doesn't um, happen often. S- so they come, and uh, Vic is like, okay, I hope I'm not posed, but I knew you guys were here. I didn't want to be left out. What? And Gina's like, Vicky has made it very clear how she feels about Emily and I, and it's not great. And then we see headlines. Vicky wants rookie Gina fired from the show. <laughs> yeah, they literally have headlines up there that says, Vicky blames Gina and Emily for show's low ratings. I was like, that is funny that they put up the show's low ratings on the show as a point, as like a way to make a joke. So, uh, and it was true. And it's barely <laughs> recovering now. Barely. So Heather's asking about. She also like, calls them Tres Abuelas, which is gross. Like Gina, it's like, and I'm only bringing it up because it's like the tenth time she's done it. And like, enough, dude. Like age shaming, you're gonna be old so quickly, and I can see how terrified you are of it because you have a moisturizer line, okay? And I cannot wait till it happens to you. I'm gonna just, I won't follow you, but I will keep searching you on Instagram over and over over the years just to watch you age, and I'm just gonna laugh my ass off as it happens in real time. Joy She's going to turn into the optical illusion lady where it's like, is it a young woman or is it an old crone? So, um, you know, with the necklace, the thing. So anyway, Vicky's like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Vicky's housewives. Like, I'm like watching watching like housewives on Bra- Instagram. Like content? It's like, like literally 
All of Bravo. It's every Instagram account we follow. I'm like, <laughs> anyway. Wait a minute. <laughs> it is so mean that she's age shaming. Let's go back to poor shaming her. Okay. So Emily is. Uh, well, that's just for a running joke, darling. <laughs> I don't really care if someone's poor. Come on. Who are we talking to here? I'm old Navy only. You know me. <laughs> so, no, but it's true, though. I mean, you're on. Poor, you can Let's do bring something it up. about. Let's you know what up. I mean? You can go earn more money. You can't just get younger. I mean, yeah. age is something that happens to all of us. And these shows are supposed to celebrate a woman as she enters that age in a time where it's hard to be celebrated as much, you know? We're supposed to be embracing that and being like, fuck yeah, you're yeah. older and you look fucking amazing, but not being going, take the well on. Yeah, these shows are, I mean. Dumb poor what, hooker. To, you know, people don't realize, realize that the Real Housewives, these are shows that do celebrate women of a certain age, like g- going into their 50s, in some cases, even their 60s. And this show is all about saying, like, you can still have a vital and exciting life at 50 or 60, and then you will be replaced by 30-year-olds. That is what The Real Housewives is all about. <laughs> Hugs. Hugs. So then... <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Emily's like, yeah, for someone who thinks we have no relevance, she sure likes to talk about us. She's clearly a fan, a super fan at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and Vicky's like, who do I get to whoop it up? Uh, uh, who, who's going to whoop it up with me? Who's going to whoop it up with me? Uh, whoop it up! Okay. Whoop question. It! All right. Question. I would like to know, how was the spa? What was it called? Massage Not Envy? What was it? <laughs> Can you remind me its name again? <laughs> and it was basically, we see a flashback of the, the woman had to walk on rocks and Shannon going, ow, 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 woo, ow. Um, and also, this is one of those episodes where you're like, okay, it's episode, what episode did we say it was? 17? 14. 14. Okay, wrap it up. Time to, let's go back to my demand for 12 episode housewife seasons. <laughs> if you're going to have 95 seasons or 95 housewives on the show, they need to be 12 episodes. That's it. They're already cutting out everything they shot on this trip. They cut out the <laughs> spa trip and then they cut out this water slide thing that other people are doing. To. They're doing all the things that we want them to do. Only give us, like, don't bloat our episodes with like 20 minutes of the meta spa. Just give us a taste. Shannon, oh, going, that's true. Okay. On a rock. I'm happy. That's a good argument. I'm very okay, happy you with this season. Yay. So I'm happy with the season. I'm just saying, like, oh, we can, you know, it's it's fun. It's like the party's about to end is how I feel. Like, it's, yeah. this is great. I think Bye. it's going to have 17 episodes. That's my prediction. This is where... This is where I walk outside, I go to my trunk, I pull out the Tupperware that I always have in my trunk, <laughs> and I come back in sneakily with a poncho over my Tupperware and start putting things in it to take with me. <laughs> so I'm not the last one there carrying Tupperware. Okay. Well, one thing on the buffet is Heather Heather went to a water park. Ran, this, <laughs> this is funny. But whoever had the decision to put Heather on a water slide is great. And so she goes, it was scary! And we see Heather on one of those things just going down like it's Action Park. It's great. Great watching her terrified. <laughs> and Tamara's like, I just set so much water up my asshole. And uh, Shannon's like, Oh, Heather, your your dress. Look at Heather. Everyone, look at Heather. Your dress is so pretty, Heather. Actually, I have a black dress just like that. Wow. Hmm. To be copied by Heather Dubrow again. That is amazing. <laughs> Tried to have my house. Tried to have. <laughs> look at how Bueller's looking at me. He Bueller's hates like... when I do Shannon voice because this is how I talk to him. <laughs> so he thinks I'm talking to him. Oh, really? Oh, are we putting our nose in our paw? Oh, look at that, yeah. licking our paw. Ooh. Look at that. Wow. See, he's like, is he talking to me? Look at him staring at no, me. So I'm not talking to you at all. Who would be talking to you? Yeah, go back to your paw. Go back. <laughs> uh, so anyway, she's like, you still my... <laughs> So Emily goes, well, <laughs> sorry, so you, I've got to stop. Let me turn the camera away. I'm going to turn away. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, your everybody. Green screen. <laughs> Just be a picture of Bueller. So chat, so then Emily's like, oh, that's nice. I'm Stephalopagus, but whatever. And then we see earlier at the water park, Emily is talking about, I guess, her hair or her face. or Whatever she's saying. She said she needs more time to repair this. And Heather goes, well, you look like Stephalopagus, but in a good way. And, you know, not your best look, but not your worst. Anyway. Stephalopagus. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. So then we got back and Tam was like, hey, I like that Stephalopagus. <laughs> basically pussies. <laughs> Slide puss. No, not Snuffleupagus. Puss. Snuffleupagus from the Muppets. Like an ice cream cake with a hat on it. <laughs> not Cookie Puss. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was just people killing each other and then jerking off all over dead bodies. No, those are snuff films. God, you're going to get arrested for your search history, Tamra. <laughs> Snuffle up because it's a Muppet. And Jen's like, um, isn't that the elephant? <laughs> Isn't that the the elephant Muppet? The, the, and Vicky's like, what? <laughs> and Heather goes, nothing. We're just having fun tonight. Let's not talk about it. And Emily's like, here's my point, okay, with Heather. She thinks I'm mean, and I'm mean to her. But then she says things that can be construed as mean, too. She said I look like Snuffleupagus. That's a huge, hairy Muppet. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, it's not the best. But, you know, also, <laughs> Emily was talking about, I think she was talking about her hair. She's saying, I need some time to get this hair fixed for tonight, right? And so, you know, and, and Heather's like, yeah, it's sort of like Snuffleupagus, like hairy and all over the place, you know? But also, like, well, Emily, you were such an asshole to her last night. I think that Heather is allowed to make a small, if, if Snuffleupagus was meant sort of as a little dig, you know, not nice, but I think, like, if Heather If it was meant for hair, okay. If it was meant for hair, okay. It's meant for face, not okay. Oh no, did we break up? Did you lose power? Um, okay. Here we are. We're back. We're back. Just had a little electricity issue there. A little snafu called the electricity went out. <laughs> <laughs> Good old fashioned power grid stuff. So I'll tell you, you really know what you're made of when the electricity goes out and you have to say, Gosh, am I alone? Where's John here? John? John? Well, <laughs> anyway, I think what was just happening was that you were saying if Heather was referring to Emily's face as Snuffleupagus, bad. Hair, passable. Right, you can't tell someone, like, you know, of any size other than a two, that they are like a snuff, they're like an elephant. I'm sorry. This show, unfortunately, has a really bad history of body shaming via Muppets. So, you know. (sighs) It really does, actually. Yes, the Slade Smiley curse on this show. So uh, Tamara's like, oh my god, are you guys excited about sex a Wait, what is it? sex a And uh, this real happy lady comes over and she's like, hi, we have a private showing of Cirque du Soleil Joya for you. Let's all head over. So they go see Cirque du Soleil, and they're watching it, and Tamara's like, look at that, bitch. Hey, hey, guess what? Hey, did you all hear? Ryan slept with that, that, that acrobat. Yeah, it's true. I heard. They texted me. Oh, my God, that acrobat is putting her leg behind her head just like one of the girls that Ryan fucked while he was still with you, stupid. <laughs> yes! Cirque du Soleil, bitch so um, then we go back to the villa, and um, there's like a chocolate crab, um, which we're doing so many shows today. We're just talking about crabs and below deck down under, and now we've got a chocolate crab. It's just all crashing in my mind. It's insidious. So um, there's a chocolate crab, and Heather goes, you're violating the crab, Gina. And Gina's like, oh, my God, what is it, chocolate? It's like, God, Gina is such a child. She doesn't even know that that's a classic line from this show. You're, you do not violate my cake. I have to do bro when Sarah came in and took the bow off of her she cake. She just drunk. has no appreciation for history. Although to be fair, I also missed that too. But you're right, and that is a great callback. That was well, a great reference. Oh, Heather, call back, calling back her own memories. It's like so sad. Nobody gets it. Except the old queen, me back at home. The old queen for Sarah's from Game of Thrones. Just like I got it, many money. So they're all they're all doing shots, and Tamara hands out a whole bunch of wacky bathing suits that have like um like the female bathing suits, but they have like like rock hard male abs on them and like chest hair and things like that. It's like fun. They're gonna wear it tomorrow to the pool, and uh, now it's time for some truth or dare. So um, I this is probably the one show where I'm okay with the truth or dare because it always devolves really badly, really quickly on Orange County. Like as opposed to Beverly Hills, where they just think they're like fabulous because they say uh, one time I blew Harry under a staircase, and you're like, great, love to hear it. But in this one, there's like, okay, truth or dare, truth. Your husband's up with half of Laguna Beach, right? <laughs> Batch. <laughs> yeah, this one, I was going to say, this one, they don't even pretend to play the actual game. That's why it's fun. They just like, get right to it. Like, <laughs> Let's play truth or dare. Jen's a, Jen's a stupid slut, and she's getting cheated on. She ruined the family. Yay! Love this game. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> First, uh, Emily has to lick nipple. Uh, ta- uh, Taylor is dared to lick Emily's nipples, and so she looks over the bathing suit. And Emily's like, I don't know why she likes my nipples so much. Because she's been dared to lick them twice, you fucking nincompoop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the love so, her. She's so funny. Oh, my God. Like, I'm not a horror. I'm just bisexual. So uh, now Vicky's like, why do you have to choose one? Since when do we have to choose? Yeah. You know what I mean? We can be everything. Let me live. So then, um, so then Vicky is, she just, she, she chooses, she chooses, she wants Jen to ask her questions. So Jen's like, oh, well, um, thank you so much for that opportunity. But I think that in this case, that maybe someone who has um, a greater understanding of you, Victoria, would be a better choice because okay. we don't have as much of a history. So I don't really know what okay. to ask you. Okay, I got it. I think you and I have similar situations where we, we're in love with a man who might not be the best decision for us. And you know, you know what you got, but you, you, you just don't want to imagine your life without him. So I have the same thing and that you have right now. And I just wish I knew that what I know now. And Gina's like, oh my God, <laughs> just saying that to Jen. She goes, that's my truth. <laughs> like, that's not what truth or dare is. A truth or dare isn't where you get to go around and say your own truth about other people. Yeah, you don't, you don't give truth bombs. You ask something, you answer something truthfully. <laughs> anyway, your truth is a lie. Anyway, you were desperate for a man, so you picked some toothless hiccup at a Marriott conference hall, and you brought him a, bought him a rack of porcelain so he'd stay with you. Then you helped him lie about having cancer so you could sell cancer insurance and herbal cancer remedies that you do nothing, that do nothing, you fucking charlatan hypocrite. Asshole, cancer faker, scamanda, abuela. How dare you come after Mr. Furley Face? Vicky can even get me to stand up for Mr. Furley Face. Okay. Wow. Vicky sucks. How dare you, after your cancer scam, come back here and say this guy isn't who he, he's pretending to be? Get out of here, scam Vicky. Vic Manda. <laughs> so, Vic. um, so scam. The- <laughs> Tricky so, Vicky. Tricky there. Vicky. There's Love your Vicky. pot. Here's your true crime, crime podcast. Tricky Vicky. Tricky Vicky. So then Gina's like, I had very high hopes for Victoria, but apparently she travels with a spoon because she's stirring that shit up. I'm like, you already did that one. You already did. You're she's disgusting. got a spoon in every handbag. You already did it. Already did it. So but like, I have to say, all of my favorite things are in this room. There's Tito's, there's French fries, and then there's also sweet potato fries, just so you can feel healthy while you eat the other fries. Yeah. It's like the salad of fries. So Vicky's like, well, the, the truth always comes out. Uh, you may see it now. You may see it three years from now. You may never see it. Okay. And Emily's like, I think she's issuing you a warning. Okay, so you're saying I should trust my gut? She's like, I, I didn't trust my gut. I didn't trust my gut. That's how I wound up with Steve. Okay, and he was a shit, piece of shit, Steve. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Don't trust your gut unless it tells you to try to make money off of cancer that you know is fake. <laughs> okay, that's when you trust it. And Taylor's like, um, I feel like your gut is really strong in your relationship because I hear you on the phone with Ryan constantly and I don't know when you'd have time to see it, honestly. Uh, oh, yeah, men, you know, always, you know, struggling to find time to cheat. Yeah. Men will fucking stick their dick in a mailbox if they thought it would get them off. <laughs> They'll cheat whenever they want to. Okay. <laughs> so Jen's like, well, look, I've heard everything that any, everyone else has heard. And there's nothing new to me here. Unless someone is sitting on something they haven't told me. Um, this is not a new conversation. So anybody? Anybody? Vicky doesn't know me. Vicky doesn't know Ryan. Vicky knows Tamara. And clearly, obviously, Vicky's hearing things from Tamara. And the producer goes, so Vicky, who do you hear that from? She goes, who do you think? Tamara. Telephone, teletabra. Come on. <laughs> not even trying to hide it anymore. So they all go to bed, and um, Gina is now talking to Heather and Emily, and she goes, was I the only one who thought it was, like, weird that, like, Vicky was, like, saying Ryan's the crappy boyfriend, and, like, Jen had no reaction? And Emily's like, well, she never does. You know that we do Botox down here, right? Oh, you, it's not really in your budget, right? So Heather's like, I just wish she'd just shut it down for once. And Emily's like, yo, I was just staring at her face, wondering, like, are you going to react to anything? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's what I'm saying. No, of course she shouldn't react to anything. You guys are giving her terrible advice. That's exactly knows, what they want. Yeah, although she should react because she's on a TV show. So um, Gina's like, you know what? Jen should be concerned about it. She should be angry about it. I'm going to say something to her. It's like, of course you're going to say something. Of course you're going to try to, like... People didn't react the way you wanted to react or the way you would have reacted, so therefore they're reacting incorrectly. That's not how life works. 
And she's also like, but shouldn't her question be like, who's this friend who's telling her this information? She knows it's Tamara. Like, she everybody knows it's Tamara. It's so old at this point. So Vicky starts a fire in the room on accident. She's like, a candle catches on something and a fire starts. And Taylor, surprisingly the sober one of the cast, super yeah. weird, takes it and puts it in an ice bucket. And she's like, okay, I'm the only one. Everyone go to bed except for me. <laughs> I thought that was my hair or whoever... Whoever's hair is attached to my hat right now. <laughs> so um, now it's day three and everyone's waking up and there's just like silly wake up stuff like Tamara and Vicky are like cuddling in bed and everything like that. There's some FaceTiming with kids, like really the most boring thing that ever happens on vacations on these shows. And then they eventually all walk over to like the beach club and they have a private, a huge private cabana. And Heather's like, can we have some champagne, please? Ha, 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 I'm carefree and fun. Uh, vacation Heather, the most fun here. Champagne, everyone. Ha, 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 ha. And then we find out that Shannon had a fit the night before because she found out it was going to be a pool day and she doesn't want to be in a bathing suit because she's gained weight and everybody else is hot. And now she has to be in a bathing suit. And I'm not doing it. I already said it. But she shows up and they do water aerobics anyway. And she's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> And yeah. she tells us that she, you know, last time she was in a bathing suit with these people, she was 20 pounds lighter. And then they show something like from her first or second season. And I'm like, you really do have blackout issues because <laughs> you've literally been in a bathing suit every single year on this show. There's never been a year. And this is not to discount her own issues with herself. Listen, I, you know, I talk about mine all the time. So um, to my own detriment, probably. Hopefully not to yours. But um, she blacks out things, I think. So I was like, that wasn't the last time you went to the beach. Come on, girl. But she ends up being okay, and they do water aerobics. Yeah. And they're doing this, – this really cute guy named Miguel comes. They're doing water aerobics. And then they're like, okay, Miguel, thanks. Uh, this is actually, like – too real like we were thinking this would be a silly exercise this is like real exercise you can go now you can go yeah this is a cute scene you idiot and he's wearing like a full black bodysuit type thing and um so they start teasing him and they're like oh so you're like a whale trainer too um but in a good way and heather goes no no i took it as funny as first and emily tries to start it you know right okay what starts well, this so oh, here's what happens so after the after the exercise so emily has like uh her hair she has her hair in like a towel and she has sunglasses on so someone i think it's like maybe taylor says she looks like mrs doubtfire and tamara's like oh my god she was called mrs doubtfire and snuffleupagus this weekend <laughs> and so heather's like but snuffleupagus is a compliment it is i've been told the wealthiest animal on Sesame Street. He's an elephant. He's an <laughs> elephant, stupid. She's like, no, he's not an elephant. He's a made-up character <laughs> with a very long nose that drags on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, he's my favorite character. Okay, he was my best friend growing up. So I just want to clarify, my imaginary friend growing up was an actual imaginary friend. So <laughs> it's almost like... It's almost like... Snuffleupagus was too poor to even get into my imagination. So I just imagined the idea of a friend. I used to call him Mr. Alfredopagus. <laughs> such a sweet. Well, I would just <laughs> I had to have an I had to have my imaginary friend be imaginary because unfortunately he was too poor to get by the three gates that it requires to get into my imaginary friend <laughs> slot. <laughs> and Gina's like, I mean, it's very on brand for her that I have an imaginary friend that can not talk back. <laughs> That's the case um, of all imaginary friends, I hate to tell you, Gina. Fucking but. idiot, Gina. <laughs> so Gina, so, the imaginary friend of this cast. Gina, literal idiot of this cast. So uh, Shannon is uh, like, I don't know who Mistress what an, uh, Snuffleupagus is, but I think it's a big, hairy, um, what do you call that? What is it? And then we cut to Tamara. And she's like, it's the big hairy guy that runs the jungle. A Sasquatch. Sasquatch. <laughs> Sasquatch. Sasquatch. A butternut Sasquatch. And she's like, a big, big foot. A big foot. Super hairy and big. Um, it's something that David would call me. And I would say, wow, thanks. Thanks a lot, David. I really appreciate that. And you can just eat another potato chip on my face. I appreciate that. Oh, but whale trainer. You know, whale trainer, you can actually be pretty, Heather DeBro. 
<laughs> yeah. And Tamara's like, yeah, it's like a Sasquatch and an elephant mixed into one. Like they ran into each other and then it's boom. A snuffle was fine. And Heather goes, yeah, you know, it's cute. Like how a dolphin trainer is cute. And I think it's so funny that that's Heather trying to play Housewives. Just like, mm-hmm. ooh, I'm going to say something really catty. Because of that time, they said I looked like a whale trainer in my bodysuit. <laughs> snuffle up, I guess. It's like, oh, my God, those aren't even apples to apples. Like, And <laughs> also, know. how hilarious that you're still carrying around that somebody calls you a whale trainer <laughs> in a full-length... <laughs> she just didn't like the implication that she might have been on like a 1099. So Emily is like, I know. Emily's like, she's like, well, I, th- I thought that ha- that I like. It's like how dolphin trainer is cute. She's like, well, but you didn't like dolphin trainer. And she goes, well, I did think it was cute at first, but here's my point. And it's not a big deal, just a point. If I wanted to interpret it differently, it could be negative. I'll finish it. We're done. Okay, <sighs> thank you. I understand. Well, I didn't mean it that way. So yeah, and she's like, yeah, I know you were just being funny, but and so are you. I get it. Okay. And Gina keeps tries to keep it going. And she's like, yeah, well, I would say that no one likes to be compared to a large, hairy animal. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and like, Emily's Gina, like, they just oh. squashed it. They just squashed it. Heather doesn't want to have a conversation. No, you're not understanding. She said it was offensive to be called a whale trainer, which is ridiculous. I get it. But you still blew her off her feelings because you thought they were stupid. And now she's calling you Snuffleupagus and you're... She's blowing it off to get you back, and now you're going to take it all the way to the end of the reunion because you can't do anything but pick fights with people over stupid things. Please don't get into a snuffle up against long-term fight. Please. It's too late. It's happening. So <laughs> it's already happened. So um, all the reports from the reunion are like, Muppet fur was flying. <laughs> And so, we brought out snuffle up against snuffle up against love what you've done with your boobs. Hey, ladies, as you can see, for this year, we made our set look like Sesame Street. <laughs> so mm-hmm. the uh, so everyone sits down for lunch now, and there's like a bowl of weenies or something. There's just it's not they're not weenies, but there's some sort of like weenie shaped things. I'm not sure well, what baby they were. sausages. I think sausages. It's breakfast, little, right? They looked lovely. Honestly, I wanted one, and so they're calling them weenies, and then they start joking about how Steve. Steve Lodge had a tiny wee wee, and then Vicky's like, "And you know what? Someone else was touching his wee wee, and I didn't know that." <laughs> so they're all joking, wee 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 wee. They're all talking about this, and then they're all laughing. They're all having a really good time, and then Gina turns to Jen and goes, "Doesn't it bother you that people still talk about Ryan?" I'm like, "Well, go fuck yourself." This is like everyone's having a fun time. Everyone's having a nice time, and now you're li- you're compla- you're accusing everyone of stirring up shit. And look at what you were literally doing right here during fun time mornings. Yep, and Jen's like, "I just don't, I don't understand it." It's like, "Why do you not have a reaction?" So Tamara's like, "Oh, wait a minute, I I have a little talk here. Come on." And Gina's like, "But I'm asking her if that comment you made last night." And Jen's like, "You know what? This is why I didn't say anything last night because I've been here the whole time, and you haven't even been here the whole time with these girls, Vicky. And so I'm not going to hold it against you." And Vicky goes, "Oh, I know." I know, thinking that she's saying, you got fired, Vicky. You're only a friend of, so you don't even know. And Vicky's so pissed. And she goes, no, Vicky, I don't mean that. I don't mean because you were fired. I just mean, you know, I'm just saying that, like, when you were saying that, I thought you were talking about your past relationships, not mine. Not mine. So Emily's like, but isn't your first reaction to be like, who are our mutual friends? And Tamara's like, well, I think you know who the mutual friend is. And by the way, I'm cracking up this entire scene because the way Ka- uh, Tamara is sitting and how she's being shot, she's sitting behind this big like floral arrangement. So you can only see her head. Her head is like above, it's just her head and then over flowers. So she, speaking of Muppets, she literally looks like a little Muppet, just like a head bobbing left and right, like, like being controlled by a hand and just like snapping at people. I was cracking up every single time Tamara talked in the scene. Uh, um, so Jen's like, why would you do that, Tamara? She's like, because Vic and I are very close, and we, we talk all the time. And she asked me what's going on. And Jen's like, I don't get you. Why are you always so mean to me? And Tamara's saying she's not mean. It's like the same fight we've heard ten times this season, which is why I'm saying, okay, you don't have to go I'm home, but malicious. you can't stay here. I'm not malicious. I'm not mean about it. You are literally the meanest and most malicious about You're it. You're horrible. Goes, you want to put a, pull it all out? I was at dinner with a friend the other night, and she mentioned the girl's name who Ryan slept with. Alex! 
She's like, okay, well, uh, so much for my attempt at discretion there. Thanks so much, Tamara. And so Jen just looks at her like, you are so shameless. I'm trying to like not drag other people in this or try to like protect people. And that Tamara just puts a name just right out there. But also Jen just keeps bringing stuff up on camera that just makes her look worse. Like, why are you bringing this up? I guess she's doing it so Tamara can't do it either. But she's like, oh, really, Tamara? You want to get it out on the block? Let's talk about the girl that Ryan was fucking. Like, (laughs) <laughs> why 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 are you bringing that into evidence so vicky's like okay so your boyfriend slept with a girl and you work out with her is that what the, is that what the crux of this is and jen goes i don't know her i didn't know her at all this is a girl that ryan dated and Tamara's like oh so you never talked with her she's like that is such a fucking baited question and you know it and that's why i just i don't just say what what do you that's why i just want to say what do you want to fucking say okay because jen i was happy i was like okay jen's like stop trying to trap me what do you want to say what do you want to try to bust me on just Mm -hmm. saying yeah she's like yes i've talked to her and she said that you reached out and that you said send me everything it's like "Uh -uh, uh-uh nah i didn't i didn't she's like yes and so if you need my stir if you need my shit to air to make you more relevant then good for fucking you you've done it Tamara. <laughs> and then she's so correct that she gets a i was she, so proud of her she na- jen jen really she nailed it that was her first fight. she ever. really killed it Tamara's yeah. like i made you more relevant because you don't fucking talk so Jen's and like, then someone goes, but she is now. She goes, okay, yeah, she is now. She does get points for that now because she is in it now. <laughs> that's fair. What's fair? What's fair? So Jen's like, <laughs> they fucked each other. You know what that's like? It's like a fucking knife to my heart. Yes, yes. Oh, sorry, I just get really excited when you say there's a knife to your heart. <laughs> she goes, but they were doing it for a year. She goes, for a year. She goes, yeah, before you, before you were even together, they were doing it. No, Taylor says before they were together, and Tamara goes, no. Thing. They were doing it this whole time. They're doing it right now. Oh my God. She's texting me right now. It's a stick. Look at the stick. They're doing it. <laughs> Wait, Jen's she just like, murdered him. You're still on the snuff porn page, Tamara. <laughs> I thought I was looking up Snuffleupagus. <laughs> so Jen's like, Jen's like, one, t- one time, and I was not with him. What do you know, Tamara? She goes, well, that he was sleeping with her while you guys were dating. And then Vicky just takes a napkin and puts it on her head. Like, I get, I get. It's too good. <laughs> so Tamara's like, um, he sent her a text message while you guys were in a concert in San Diego, and it said, and she goes, I'm naked in my bed. I know. I've seen that text, Tamara. I know. I've seen it. <laughs> and then Gina, I think Gina is with the rest of us. I think we're all with Gina when Gina goes, but why are you still with this person? And Vicky's like, yeah, why are you protecting him? So she tells us that she does know about this. And, you know, it's she were they were on a break and it hurts and it's painful, but why do they have to keep talking about it every single episode, you know? Mm-hmm. And so she's yelling at Tamara, like, why is it your job to busy yourself in my pain? And she's like, because you didn't show any emotion. Which is, again... What we talked about in New York this week, typical abuser bullshit, where you have to break somebody down and make them cry, <laughs> and then you give them a award, an award for breaking down and crying and act like you've saved them somehow, when you just were the one to fucking break them down and ruin their life. Yeah. You assholes. Tamara's like, you sit here like this, like you had a lobotomy. It's like... Welcome to Orange County. Half the people walking around there look like they've had a lobotomy, okay? I know. Jen's like, I paid a lot of money to look like this. How dare (laughs) you? It's literally a county built on freezing your face. So Jen's like, because it's easier. It's fucking easier. So she says, "I I tend to bring everything in and get like quiet and I process and I think... And then I once I hit a breaking point, I can't even control it anymore. And then the top blows. And Tamara's like, well, you ruined your whole family for this guy. And she's like, I didn't ruin my family. How fucking dare you, Tamara? Yeah, how dare you? She slams the table. And Tamara's just doing that thing where she's doing her really, like, fast-forwarded head shaking. Where she's like, <laughs> you, 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 you left for a player. He left for a player. He's the only person he, he and that's the only person he fucked in my chin. <laughs> and Vicky raises her hands like, oh, my God. Okay, I'm done this. Okay, I'm, I'm a nervous. I'm a I nervous. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, no, no, you can take me down to the office, down to downtown. So Jen's oh. like, say your facts. What do you know? She goes, I'm not going to say anything. So now all of a sudden, Tamara has nothing to say. And Jen's like, that's so fucking typical of you. So she starts to weep. And Tamara's like, everyone knows he's a player. Your fucking, your fucking mother-in-law knows he's a player. Because Emily is like, yeah, Perry knows. Because, well, Perry, 
She works out at the same gym, and she's heard that he's a player too. Yeah, word really does. And get then around. she starts cracking up because that's hilarious. When you're getting like your boyfriend is so bad that this seventy-something-year-old woman <laughs> is coming home to gossip about it. That is terrible. That's pretty bad. But then Gina is like, well, you know, I think the bottom line is Jen knows he's a player. Jen knows he's a douchebag. Jen knows he's a cheater. Jen knows it's a dead end relationship, but it's her cheater and player and dead end relationship. Okay. And she chooses to be with him. That's her choice. <laughs> and Which is like, true. But she's not sitting here in pain because she's being asked about your, her relationship for the 14th time. She's upset about what's... Oh, no, this is Heather. She's like, she's upset about what's going on between the two of you, not because of her relationship. So stop trying to make it about, you know, the relationship. And <laughs> then she goes, listen, we get it. He's a slut. He's a hoe. He's a gigolo. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> what's the end game here what is the end game and so tamara's like i mean i'm sorry i thought we were over this and she's like i can't get over it because every time it just keeps coming up and i just don't know what you want from me tamara like T- what do you want tamara's saying i thought we were over this while she was the one actively resuscitating it so that way she can get back into the season after she started a wildfire with heather Debro. so jen's so Tamara's like, I don't like that you're with him. I'm sorry. It's hard for me to hold back. I did the same thing with Vicky. I should have learned my lesson, but the, but I didn't. And at the end of the day, I was fucking right. And Vicky's like, but you know what? We got to find out for ourselves, Tamara. We got to find out for ourselves. And uh, Tamara's like, yeah, but don't lie to yourself. Like, I mean, come on, don't lie to us. Like, with your Fuji and your fake Fendi. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. And Gina doesn't even look embarrassed. And isn't she currently wearing a fake Versace sweatshirt or did she take it off? Because it was like right around. She took it off and she put it in her, she put it in her pocketbook, which was really just the pizza box from last night that she attached pipe cleaners to and put it over her uh, Shoulder. What's so funny to me about that stuff is everybody who sees you guys with your Versaces all over your outfit thinks you look so fucking stupid. That's what I don't get. Like, I guess they don't care because we're poorest, I guess, in their mind. But you all look like idiots with your fake stuff. Even when it's real, you just yeah. look like, like, help a baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> help a baby. So, um... So, so now Tamara is like, t- Taylor takes Jen to go for a walk. And then Tamara just at the table, like her head darting back and forth, like in full puppet form. And she's like, I'm honest, be fucking smart. And that's, oh, yeah. that's where it ended. It was, and that's I where it ended. Hilarious. So good. This show, oh my gosh, it's a fun show. And they did do the reunion this week. So I'm so yeah. excited to see what happens. It's going to be a good uh, one. Everybody, come back tomorrow for some Southern Charm. We'll be here for a little Southern Charm for you. And uh, come listen to our bonus. We're about to do it. Who knows what that's going to turn into, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to be something. Okay. It'll be fun. Thanks, Love everyone. You guys. Bye. We will talk to you next time. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Saboni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Roo Roo La Roo. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey 